Was a dumbass. Genghis Khan had endless women and 200 children as a reward for conquest. He tweeted, I'm the most searched man on the planet. I've conquered Earth. I'm the highest status male on the planet. Females do not expect loyalty from me. They only expect that of lesser men. Then there was this. Imagine having less than 10 children because you're a who doesn't have four wives. Genetic failures. Finally, if a girl follows me and she's hot and I see a single picture of her in a private jet, it's block. Women can't afford jets. Women are all brokies. Why are you flying around on some man's jet? You should have been a virgin when I met you. Haram. All right, Andrew Tate. Now, you're, you're getting very near the knuckle with some of those tweets. Am I? Will you tell me? I don't think so. I think people can understand they're semi-satirical. I think people can understand... Do you mean them as jokes or do you mean them? No, I don't mean them as jokes. I mean, they're a overall public commentary and observation. I do mean what I say. If I were to see a girl on a private plane on Instagram, for example, I would assume that a man put her on that private plane. I would not assume she bought it herself. What if it was... Perhaps Ariana? that makes me misogynistic. What if it was Ariana Grande or Beyonce? Well, that's slightly different, isn't it? Why? Because they're famous and very they're rich. They're women? Yeah, of course, and they're famous and very rich. But so if there I, are lots of women you saw, wouldn't think that if you well, actually saw them on if a private I saw, Well, if I saw a 19-year-old girl from Moldova where the average wage is $200 a month and she was on a private jet, I would assume that with the balance of probabilities, considering I'm an adult, it's very likely because of her beauty, a man has put her on that private plane. Yes. If that makes me misogynistic instead of just perspicacious enough to understand how the world works, so be it. I'm a realist. Should One thing about Andrew Tate is that... He is extremely calculated with what he says, and he does not say things he does not mean or know how to defend. And this is where most people go wrong because everyone believes that they can corner him into saying something that he did, he did not mean or getting an apology for, from him. But he knows exactly what he's saying, and he knows in which manner to say it in order to generate the attention that he's seeking. Not necessarily seeking, but he formulates everything in a manner that gets attention. Would you be such a generalist about these things? Well, you have to be a generalist when you're looking for in the balance of probabilities and trying to find balance in the world. You have to be a generalist. In general, if I stroke a lion, it's going to bite my hand. In general. There might be a nice one, but I don't want to find out. So that's how the world works. You've praised the Taliban in the past. Would you do so again tonight? The world is not black and white. The world is grey. It's very difficult to sit and make black and white assumptions about anything. To and that was a complete setup um trying to in a sense kind of conflating issues trying to put prove a point that oh so you are a misogynist you are a terrorist because you support this kind of view or you support a specific group of people that was an absolute setup and judging by the answer andrew could fail or possibly pass this test he could completely just ignore. But of course, as I mentioned earlier on, he's extremely calculated. He knows that he's going to be cornered, especially when it comes to Piers Morgan. That's what he seems to do with everybody. I am actually surprised that he's allowing Andrew to talk on this one because he hardly lets anyone talk. He's constantly shouting over people trying to get his point across. But Andrew's probably calculated and he knows that this is how the gameplay is going to go. I know that he's going to attack me. He's going to set traps, but I'm extremely calculated. So I am fully prepared for this to sit and say that the Taliban are completely and utterly evil and we're completely and utterly good, as you just discussed with the moral high ground. I believe that the Taliban bring law and order. It may not be the law and order we like, but it's a form of law and order, and humans tra usually gravitate towards... What about towards their treatment of women? I mean, only well, tonight... Only tonight they have banned any women from going to university. Fantastic. Let's get the feminists to go and teach them a lesson. The feminists are so tough, and they... <laughs> See, right there, what he just mentioned is almost guaranteed that it will stir up an uprising against what he just said. He is misogynistic. He does not like women. How could he say such a thing? How could he prepare women to go to war and things along those lines? He knows exactly what he's saying. And that's also because he does not take himself extremely seriously. He knows that, you know, there's a time and place to make jokes regardless of how I'm saying it. Some people will probably understand that it's a joke. But we live in a society nowadays that people cannot distinguish between a joke and what is being said that is serious. They cannot distinguish between the two. The lines are completely blurred. Hence why you have attacks on people and people getting cancelled because oftentimes people misinterpret. It may not be misinterpretation, but sometimes it is. So the lines are completely blurred. The fact that you have to mention that, oh, I did not mean it in that way or that's not what I meant to say is... 
absolutely astounding to me. Stand up and say they can do anything a man can do. Let's arm them up and send them to Afghanistan. I'm sure they'll fix it. You just literally <laughs> spent an impassioned first segment comparing the way, for example, Dubai handles law and order Correct. to this country. Correct. So you do express views about different laws. Absolutely, both places. So when I put to you a law that basically bans women from being educated, it's not. why is it a problem for you to say, you know what, it's wrong? There are both places I've resided in, Dubai and London, so I have personal experience. I can give my personal opinion, but like I said, it has absolutely nothing to do with me with what the Taliban decide to do inside of Afghanistan. And if they decide that's the most prudent way to run their society, then we have two choices. We can either go over there and start another war that we shouldn't be involved in and waste a bunch of life, or we can sit and say, it's up to them. They should govern themselves. They're people. We're no better than them. And they've decided to live their lives a particular way, and that's how they're going to live it. Like I said, if feminists are very upset and they're very disgusted by the fact that in Afghanistan, women cannot go to school, I've been told repeatedly by feminists that they're just as capable as men in all realms, and I I expect them to arm themselves and fly over to Afghanistan and fix it. Feminism is defended by men. Men stand up and defend feminism, not feminists themselves, because they're incapable of violence. And we're in a situation now where you're saying that we should send men to go and fight for feminism. Why? It's not a man's problem. No, I think I'm saying feminists believe. I think, I think, well, hey, I think men can be feminists too, because if feminism believes in equality for women, it's not I'll about equality. It. I don't agree with radical feminists who hate men. Right? They're, they're do, to me, the radical anything to me is a bad thing. Yeah, and I think most feminism in the West currently is radical. Well, some of it is, no yeah. question. Absolutely, but this is my point. My point is that what the Taliban are going to do whatever the Taliban decide to do. If I'm going to fly over to another country, I will respect their laws and customs. It's not my job to come along and tell other people how to live. I don't believe I have a moral high ground in that degree. And if people are genuinely upset and disgusted by it, the bottom line in most disagreements on the earth is violence. People who feel like they should go and fix it, then fix it with violence, then it can be the feminists who feel so outraged by it. But it's funny, they don't comment on these subjects, feminists. They seem to instead attack the Western male for some reason. It's an easy win for you to make women think you're not anti them, to say that when they're not given equality, as the women in Afghanistan clearly are not, because they're not allowed to go to university now, as of today, that is clearly unequal, unfair. We should all be able to agree that that is wrong. Well... You know, sometimes I'm completely left dumbfounded at how certain people possess the ability to conjure up mainstream ideas and defend them to the point of using those ideas and trying to get someone to go against those certain beliefs and paint the other person to be the bad person for going against those ideas. That's basically what Pierce Morgan is trying to do right here. Taking those mainstream ideas, placing them side by side with Andrew Tate and if he disagrees with those, then he clearly is the one to blame. Almost making him the person that sort of creates these mainstream ideas. He's the one to blame for feminism. He's the one to blame for misogyny. And along those lines, I'm completely dumbfounded at how that is even possible. Certainly. as Because think about it. You don't even do your research. You basically see what the mainstream media is purporting. You take that bring to an interview to try and, on, and impose it on a man to change his views or basically force him to say the opposite. But this is a well-studied man. He knows exactly what he's talking about, so he's not going to budge. Even you, tough guy, I, I, Andrew. It's Tate. not tough guy. I am a professional. As a professional, I can state that, yes, it is not equal. Yes, it is not fair. That is obvious for anybody. I'm not saying those things are not true. What I'm saying is, it's nothing to do with me. Right, okay, but you made a concession exactly. you think is wrong. It's wrong. Then. I said it's unequal and it's unfair. Yeah, so wrong. Exactly. These things have nothing to do with him, but Pierce tries to create a direct relationship, directly proportionate, because everything Andrew says, oh, exactly, it matches, so you are a misogynist. That's why Andrew mentions that. You're making it seem as if everything that you just said is my fault. I have absolutely nothing to do with it. Well, perhaps. And He's just a man with an opinion. Force yourself, Andrew. No, perhaps it's wrong under certain moral guidelines, but under the moral guidelines which are currently in charge of the jurisdiction of Afghanistan, they don't believe it's wrong. It's nothing to do with me. Well, then I, I'm not going to sit here and tell other countries how to run their laws. I'm going to live in societies which, with right, laws I'll I respect. You, you know what? I'll take unfair and unequal. Sure. Where is the line for you between masculinity, which I will always defend, and which I agree with? I think a lot of women like men to be masculine, and, and what has become known as toxic masculinity. And the reason I ask you is that you are engaged in that debate with men all the time. 
Where is the line for you where men shouldn't cross? There's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's genuinely masculine. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. It's absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you have, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, <laughs> when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. Where you have a Look at Pierce Morgan right here. You can see his eyes are glued on Andrew and he's listening to everything he's saying and he's taking it in. But the agenda that he has to carry out throughout the interview will, will not allow him to agree and say that, you know, perhaps you are right on this. He will listen, take it in and completely go the other direction as if, OK, no, you're wrong. What about this? Oh, you're wrong as well. What about this? Completely stupid watch have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. Those were masculine where did men. You, where did you get your views about this from? Just what I grew up with. It's the family I grew up around. And your the, father, and, your mother, yeah, both? And, and the world I lived in. And I think a lot of the things I'm saying now about masculinity and how people should act and the world, how the world should function, were considered completely normal. and. Listen, people, this is how we're raised, specifically in Africa. The men do the hard work. They do the protecting while the women are at home catering for the men, you know, cleaning up the house, cooking, because we don't do those things. We can do it, but everyone falls into the, their natural roles and we do not have a debate or an argument about it. Of course, it can get to it can get heated if you believe that that is what a woman is supposed to do only. No, she can be completely independent. Go do whatever it is that she wants to do. But remember, we have roles to play. And it's constantly hammered in us, especially in Africa, that, okay, as a man, you're the provider, provider and you're the protector. So we live by those to full extent, to be honest. So oftentimes, as an African man, I'm sure even Middle Eastern men, they do not see too many other problems with what Andrew Tate says. Perhaps there's certain things that, could be said in a different manner to be more under understandable and more digestible. Um, but then again, everyone is entitled to their opinion as long as they can back it up. Accepted by everybody only 20 years ago. I think the world's just lost its mind. For me to stand up and say a man should protect a woman now gets to be called a misogynist and canceled. If I said that 10 years ago, everyone would say, duh. And what's funny is everyone who argues against me and says men shouldn't protect women, especially all the feminists, if they were with their boyfriend and a man broke into their house, guess who they'd expect to go downstairs? Who do you think? Think they go themselves? Are they going to Afghanistan? No, we send men to do these things. So well, we, send women, we send women in the armed forces too. We, we you do. have to generalize when you make points. There are many, many courageous exceptions, people. Exceptions, exceptions women in the armed do not forces. disprove the rule. As, as I mentioned, generalizations, of course. What we mainly know is that if war breaks out, it's mainly the men that are willing to do the protect, protecting. And of course, you do get a few select women that are willing to be in the front lines too but that is not the majority the majority of people that are willing to protect and die for their for their families is men which is i believe it's a great thing i mean do we why do we even have to argue about that in today's society exceptions do not disprove the rules men do the fight what right now in ukraine men cannot leave women are allowed to leave because men have to fight in the front line and women are allowed to go to dubai that is how it is what do you say to young men who come to you for advice? You feel lost. You don't really know where they fit into society. I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're co always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. Damon. Powerful words from Andrew Tate right there. Powerful words. Sheila Hancock says we've become too over-emotional as a society, crying too much about everything. Has she got a point? She's completely right. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. 
All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and mm. act how they feel and mm. they don't have to act as a man should. Yeah. One thing I am completely against is men being completely emotional and showing their emotions. And I think where certain men fail is when women tell them that is what we like. So they get comfortable and start to show those emotions. In my opinion, that is the wrong thing to do. As a child growing up, I was constantly told men do not cry. And I feel that was extremely beneficial because if I were to stop at every single obstacle that I encountered, were to stop and think to myself, I cannot overcome this and started crying, it will take me years and years to become the man that i'm supposed to be so the fact that i had in my mind men do not cry allow me to push through so many obstacles depression whatever it was i just okay let's toughen it up let's go to the gym let's go work out as he mentioned oftentimes you don't feel like doing anything but you have a duty to do so because you know it is beneficial not just for you as a man but for everybody around you and ladies and gentlemen that's gonna be it we out of time i gotta go back to work but yeah don't forget subscribe Comment, like, and share if you like. We'll be back. Yeah, hey, Tony Franco, it's a wave.